So if we're talking about linguistics, in, in linguistics they talk about words and clauses and sentences. Mm -hmm. But um, what are the basic categories if we're talking a multimodality? Well, some of the uh, we don't. Of course, if you're in multimodality, you can still look at um, words and clauses and sentences and paragraphs. Um, but you might want to have much more general terms, which will apply to image as much as they do to writing, to gesture as much as um, it does to speech. And um, some of the basic categories um, that we will talk about, and we can do that now, are mode, of course. Um, think about the notion instead of having a term such as language, have a more general term such as um, semiotic resources. Um, and then what can these things do, which we talk about as affordance. Um, and of course, um, where in linguistics, maybe the sentence is the basic unit um, in multimodality in a semiotic kind of uh, approach, we might talk about sign. Okay, so to explain me, but what, what exactly then is mode? Mode is a term that uh, allows us uh, to get away from using language for everything. And whereas you might say there's visual language and there's gestural language and there's uh, language of flowers, we now say there are different modes and modes are resources where, whereby we can make meaning material. I want to mean something, I want to communicate something, how do I make my meaning evident, uh, material, so others can kind of take it in, see it, hear it, maybe even touch it. And modes are these things which are socially produced and they become cultural resources for making meaning. They're regular because the community uses these uh, resources um, over long periods of time in similar kinds of circumstances. So there's a regularity that applies to them. They are material. They have sound or they have image like that or they're tactile or you know, they even smell, I suppose. Um, and so modes are these things which a culture um, has as means of making meaning and it allows us to get away from making, gen uh, making language too general and maybe therefore too vague a term to be useful. Okay, so we have this website here. Okay. Um, what would then be mode if we're looking at this website? Different well, modes. on that BBC homepage, news, um, you have a kind of a band at the top which is um, in, in a dark red color. Then underneath there is a kind of a lot of white so colour is obviously important in some way. And we'd have to say, is colour significant? Is meaning being made with colour? In the broadband at the top, there's also um, something which people who know the BBC will recognise as a logo. So there's an image even in the broadband there. And is image Im important? But of course, then when you go below it to this big, um, basically white space, what you have is kind of chunks of stuff you have modules of meaning. And these modules of meaning here seem to be made up of um, bits of writing, which are next to or underneath um, an image. So you have image and writing. You have color. Um, so those would be the main modes. And then the question, I suppose, that would appear um, after a little while of, kind of going, going into this is to say, is image more important than writing, or is writing more important, or do they do the same job, or do they do different kinds of jobs? Mm -hmm. um, so um, that's how I would begin to make um, my inroads into understanding how this um, website functions. Okay, and earlier you mentioned um, semiotic resources. Yeah. What is a semiotic resource then? Um, it's a general way, again, of, of saying, what does the culture make available uh, for us to make our meanings with? Semiotic is about meaning, um, resources for making meaning. Um, and saying semiotic resources is a way of um, not making it necessary to list a whole long list of, um, of things that, um, you know, that, that the culture has. Um, but it says there are many, um, and all of them um, have potentials for making meanings um, in particular ways. Okay, so in, in this sense, the, these, or you, the different modes you're talking, like image and uh, the writing and the color, are different semiotic resources that they have made use of. Um, um, I might have mentioned when we started this <laughs> little conversation that um, we're assuming um, that all these semiotic resources are capable of making meaning, but not in the same way. Um, so an image, for instance, doesn't have words. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have paragraphs. 
writing does have words and has sentences and paragraphs. And the question then is, what can you do with writing? What does writing afford? What does it make possible to do? Um, so for instance, outside at the moment, uh, the weather is a bit kind of moist. Um, and um, you know, we say it's, it's raining. Um, we don't know what the it is mm. that is raining. But language kind of forces us into kind of saying something is raining. But if I had an image here, I would just have a rainy day. Okay. It might be evident what it is. It does things, but does them differently, and the difference is significant. Um, so affordance of a mode um, is an important issue because we're saying these are not just repetitions, they're not just parallel, they're not just the same thing done differently, mm. uh, but rather they are, um, they allow us to do somewhat different things in relation to a similar kind of issue. So it's raining, mm. writing does it in one way, image does it in another way, but we could have a sound recording <laughs> of, of rain on a, on a roof or on a surface or, or something like that. So it allows us to make kinds of um, combinations of things which together make a richer meaning or a fuller meaning that a single mode by itself um, would enable us to do. So that's the reason, for example, why we have the text and the colours, the images? I think so. Yeah. I think so. For instance, there it says six soldiers killed in Afghan blast. Mm. And the writing will give us a little bit of information about what happened on that day in Afghanistan. The image is a, an image of a tank uh, with uh, soldiers kind of standing on it. What does that image do? Well, it immediately kind of transports us into an arid landscape, um, a huge tank which takes up just about uh, most of the image these people in battle fatigues and uh, a different kind of um, meaning being made by each of those components and yet they kind of um, come together and give us an overall sense of what's going on there. Mm. And um, the last uh, term you mentioned was sign. Yeah. Can you explain that a bit well, more for me? Well, um, if, you, if, you, if you spoke to the man or the woman in the street and said what's language about, they'd say words and sentences, probably. Um, in other words, people have a kind of a common sense about what are the units of language, words and sentences. Um, when we're thinking about um, many modes, um, gesture doesn't have words, image doesn't have word. Music, only when it's sung, <laughs> has words, but it has melody. It has different kinds of um, um, entities. And so the question is, um, what is a common kind of thing to all of these things? All of these things make meaning. And the entity of meaning that we use, let's say, in multimodality, not everybody, but people who have a semiotic approach, is the sign. The sign mm -hmm. is a combination of a form and a meaning. So in, here, for instance, we have a tank. That's a kind of form that means might, power, mm. violence, whatever. Yeah, so um, the sign is um, the basic unit which is common in the semiotic approach um, t to all attempts to understand um, what meaning is being made. Now here, for instance, you have writing and you have image. So you have um, the signs made in writing, you have the signs made in image, color comes into it, the arid color of um, the, the image we've got there. Um, so all of these are signs and we can ask uh, what are the form, what is the form which is being used here? Mm. Um, and what's the meaning which is being attached to the form. That's what the sign is about.